Hi. This is my LG LED 65 inch C7P U. Uh, about a month ago, the HDMI ports were started going out. I had one and three go out, and I was just using two arc to run off my Comcast box. And then about a couple weeks after that, on the other side of the screen itself started getting blinking in and out, power out and power in, and then it would get like a snow across a quarter of the lower part of the screen. I wish I had a videotape that. <coughs> the power went out about a week ago. It, I went to start it up, watch the show, and I had nothing. There was no power. I used the remote control. I used the uh, power button over here, manual button to power it up. So I had nothing. So of course I decided to watch a couple YouTube videos and try to figure out what was going on myself because my warranty has run out. I bought this in two th this beginning of 2018. I did not get the extended warranty and and I called the manufacturer and all they they do is just turn you over to uh, the no warranty department where they just had me unplug it wait 10 seconds and plug it in and then referred me to some numbers to call that didn't work for a repair so I watched a couple YouTube videos decided I was gonna do try to at least figure out there was something wrong with a fuse or something since so it had no power maybe there's an inline fuse somewhere uh, and I could replace it so I brought it upstairs to the guest bedroom and I laid it on this bed right here and that's why you see this thing on my bed so in order to access the boards that are behind this panel right here you have to remove eight screws and you have to remove which I already removed is the stand, the TV stand. As you see right there, nice little TV stand, but it slides up in here. It's got a couple little clips right there, and then it just slides out. You might have to budget a little bit because there's a clip, but it comes out pretty easy. Once you get that out, that'll give you your access to these other two screws. There's also where the plug goes in here. Right now I have this off too. I actually started another video, but the fan was going and it created a lot of sound noise so I had to redo the, this video. So this has one screw in it also. It comes out and you kind of have to take it and kind of push it over this way because there's two where they clip right here and this will come out. And then you just kind of like just turn it this catty corner like that and then this whole thing will just Okay, not just lift up. I tell you what, I, it just would not lift up. I actually had to hit it about right here on this corner here. And there's a little tap to unlock the clips, and I'll show you that to you in a minute. Okay, there's the panel uh, laying on the opposite side, so it'd be the mirror of this end that would actually be down at that end. But the clips are right here these little clips right here if you can see them let me go to the other side they kind of go in these little slots right here so it kind of just so coming out this way releases them from the slots and then you can lift it up so as you see there's little tangs on these clips and then it just push away this way to come out then lift it straight up just now you can see the components underneath that panel and I'll name them off this is where the power comes in right here and then of course this is the power board with some heat sink MOSFETs capacitors step down transformers um, there's a cable ribbon and then wires here that look like they supply the motherboard or mainboard 
and this one back and forth looks like so two separate cables to the TCON board and these two items here are the speakers and left and right and this is the infrared for the remote controller and this is the switch and the manual power button for the manual power so what I did I looked for any kind of maybe burnt marks so I maybe thought if anything's burnt got hot it might show up on the back cover and I see some dark areas but when you kind of like wipe them with your finger it looks like soot in a kind of way and it's scattered all over the back of this panel inside has no just like maybe dust so I'm not gonna worry about that too much it has like a one two inch gap between the um, space between the components so I won't worry about that too much right now uh, my main thing was to come in and see if I had power here at my motherboard that's simply you can just take these clips and you can squeeze them and pull this out like so just give it a little tug and that comes out like that and I just tested that for AC voltage from the wall outlet and it was good <clears throat> you, you might be different where I'm in the USA so that's 120 volts roughly and then if you notice there's a fuse right here an inline fuse like uh, that's soldered in and there's another one over here that has purple two purple stripes and then there's one over here that has two red stripes so I'll get a pencil and I'll show you so here and here and here and of course I got out my trusty multimeter my fluke and I tested across the leads so for continuity so I went like this and I set my meter on ohms make sure it beeps hear the beep see and you can hear the beep and yeah and I just did the other two the same way three yeah and they they're good so after I checked the fuses I decided to check to see if I had power at this cable here and these this connector here and this connector here so I was able to speak to an electrician not from LG but somebody who has a little more experience than I do and he told me to check the power connections here while it's still plugged in and with the power plugged in and so what I did is I removed this pin here connector and then there's underneath it there's a a legend of the voltages that go to each of these sockets here and pins and I've actually made a little map of it what I've learned is that the power board connection right here feeds the motherboard here at this connection here there's um, power sources that feed the motherboard so I'm going to remove this pin and this connector and just squeeze these ends together right here these little tabs just squeeze them on the end and just kind of wiggle it out and it removes it set it aside okay so you can see that each one of these match the pins 
So what you'll do is you'll check 20 volts here and 20 volts over here. So you'll check this pin and then that pin. They should be 20 volts and they are 20 volts, 20 volts, ground, ground, 20, 12 volt, 12 volt, ground, ground, but 12 volt here. So I'm going to set up my multimeter, taking the common, make sure those are good and tight, to ground, chassis ground, just here. And then it's good to have a small needle type pin to probe into the connectors. So I'll already put this connector back and then I'll put, set my multimeter to volts DC. Volts DC. And then I'm going to plug in my power supply. Make sure everything's clear out of my way. And I'm going to plug it into the wall outlet. Hear a little clicking noise on the power board. That's all I hear. I see no lights on the infrared and no lights on the switch. I see no lights anywhere. So I'm going to take my multimeter and I'm going to check to where the points of voltage set on the board. And that's the first one right here. that right there. I have 20 volts here and there's one right above it. It's 20 volts. Where's that ground? There's 20 volts and 20 volts. There's two of those there. And then a ground is the next one and then 12 volts is the next one. And then there's a uh, another connection, which is ground. And then there's another one, and that is the power on, which is, as you can see, is 3.4 uh, volts, which should be correct. And then there's Another one is ground, and then another 12 volts, and then 20 volts, and then a ground, and then it says uh, something about drive, and there's zero volts there. After testing the power board, um, it's a good possibility that it's the mo main board or the motherboard since my HDMI units ports did go out uh, so uh, I went online to encompass.com I put in my part number Zero four, hit enter, search, and it comes up with the same motherboard that's on my TV. Uh, it's LG part number, description, and in stock, and then cost, and you can get a protection plan and all that. So you just add it to your cart. Uh, you get a like a fifteen percent discount when you in, when you log in, create a uh, or sign in and uh, it'll knock a little bit of money off so and right now it's in FedEx's it's in transport well good news today the main board arrived 
about 10 minutes ago. I thought it was my shirt from JC Penney's. Anyway, uh, that looks like it. Don't know if it's refurbished or what, but it looks new. But as long as it works, I'm gonna go hook it up and see what happens. So I'm um, trying to compare the two just visually. Connector, 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 connector there, connector here, here. Ooh, I must have to replace this piece here too. I swapped between HDMI. I think first I'm gonna unplug this. Let's say just pushing these clips and kind of wiggle it out. That's one. And then looks like this part pops up. And comes out. And pushes down. Maybe. Pushes down. It pops out. It pops out. And this looks like it squeezes together. I don't trust this board. <laughs> I've seen so I'm gonna get shocked on our YouTube <laughs> from UK though, so their cycles and bolts are a little bit different. So I'm gonna try to remove this connection. Let's see if we can get this to come out. Yep. There we go, just squeeze them together and they came out. I don't know about this. I never took one of these out before, so. Shit. Okay, I'm gonna have to figure out what's going on here. Okay, after doing a little research, I found that uh, on these ribbon cables, there's a little hinge lock here, and you just take it and you flip them up with your finger. Don't use like a screwdriver or something because you might poke and damage something. Your finger's all you need as you see. Okay, there it goes. Oh shit. I'm just connecting like that. Huh. Take it back further. There it goes. Yeah, they just come right out like that. Okay, well, that's crazy. Just uh, just them being, just these sitting in here in the kind of like the curve part of this. It's kind of like a force that pushes this into this end because there's no locks or anything. Okay, all right. So now, and now I just want to see what's going on here. So this looks like it just takes regular. Fill up head screwdriver in there. I gotta set down there here because I'm gonna use it. Then that one comes out. Oh, it looks like there's only two. So um, they got little red marks like on the screws like if you are gonna Okay. Alright, so that might slide out once I get the board off. This could pull off. That screws one. There's one. There's two. I'm not really worried about static for my feet or anything because this board is bad. Hopefully. That's three. Plus the two I took out right here. One of these didn't have a screw in it. Okay, so this white piece that just acts as a protector enforcer, I guess. I, I just, it's got little clips like right here and here. But they go inside that little hole right there. But what I did is I just lifted it up on the edges and unclipped them over here like this on the corners. 
and then it looks like it slides right out yeah that's what that's what it is you got a little tab under up higher and down up and then that's how it clips into the holes up here down on the bottom and up top down the bottom clip this on there so this one here is on the top that's on the bottom and it just goes together like that oh. dial sticking out right there I don't know if you can see that but the hole has got that's got to go down in that hole here I'll show you right there's a little pin like sticking out it's, that locks into and it kind of makes it like it goes only one way to screws back in. I'll just get them started. They're all the same size, I don't know. Some kind of machine screw. I don't know the size, but you lose one. Uh, you'll have extra one to go down the hardware store and get you. Replacement screw. Refined thread. Ooh, yeah. I'll do metric pencil. Be an LG. I want some magnets on that stuff. You know what? I can put them right there. So what's going on there? I'm going to put this up here. You know, they didn't have their best screw out there. You know, I'd, I'd be extremely careful how much you torque down on these screws. It doesn't take much, as you can see by the thread. You know, when you the board, it, these little locks are down, so you have to put those up before you put your pins in, your ribbon pin in. I tell you what, people are geniuses. This is just amazing shit. Yeah, that's one locked. So the one goes in here. Do one slot here. It's got a little tabs on here. You can grab onto. It helps out. And it locks down. <coughs> and this one pops in here. Pops in. Okay, that pops in. And then this one pops in. Everything's plugged in except for this and the power source. Now everything's plugged in. Check, check, check. Ooh, this thing's on like a little floating kind of deal of springs in here this must it be for expansion hmm. crazy all right i'm gonna put my screws back into my tcon board sound cable for your optical it's lit up it wasn't lit up before oh shit we might have some here let me get the back cover and the stand on and see what happens all right i'm unplugged i'm gonna put this back on here
to. <laughs> Title to a little stupidity. So I don't know what the hell I'm doing anyway. Okay. And I'm gonna one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Just like we said, eight screws. The last remember now on this one here. Uh, I would kind of just clock it to one angle and let it pop in where the clips are. Ugh, man, I had to get there and walk around and look. I should have did that first, but notice there's hardly any gap there. And as I go down, see that big gap right in here? Yeah. Well, <coughs> See that it's thin here, but I got a big gap right there because somehow it didn't seat well. So I had to pull all the screws out and I'm gonna try to seat it better. So what I ended up just doing is just grabbing it. It's really flexible plastic and I just bent it out and just kind of like let it fall in its place. Exactly. What okay, that looks way better. Now for the stand, I would just assume that it pretty much just slides slides in there. Matter of fact, there's little tabs on there. They don't clip or lock or I didn't hear them click or anything, but the screws are already lined up in the holes, so I just got to put the screws in. is cable management I would think that would go like so and then clip down that's it and I bought this TV about three years ago and I never noticed something I noticed when I was working on it was there's this on the back I never peeled it off <laughs> I'm just curious does it come off? Supposed to come off? I don't know. I don't think it has anything to do with the screen though. I'm not sure. I'm gonna leave it on. And I'll have to find out later. So I didn't even think about it. It probably runs. No, you know what? It doesn't. It just goes straight across like this. Heat problem. Now. <laughs> Imagine ain't that. Okay folks, I stood her up on the stand. I've got the remote in my hand and now for the grand finale. I heard click. Mode. How to get the user mode? Press the stop key with the remote control. Yeah. Okay. So the power's on. I got never. I didn't even get this. I have no signal coming from no box or Xbox or anything. But I have a box floating around on the screen saying factory mode. How do I get to user mode? How to get to user mode by pressing end stop with key with a remote control. So I got to figure out. Where's the end stop on this remote control to get it from factory mode back into user's mode, I guess. Uh, I can't remember where I left off, but this here says the TV main board, new repair process, TV onboarding PCB. So, Hello, my name is Dominic and today we're going to be looking at the in stock button on an LG service remote control. So this is my sixth video 
in the LG service remote playlist of videos. I have done other videos about this remote control. I have done how to use the LG service remote control in a video that the LG service I'll remote control tools. I would suggest you. I just hit the uh, end start on the remote and that's what you get on the screen I recommend that you take a picture of it with your phone because in case you accidentally make any changes down here it's my UTT and that tells you how much time your TV has on it. Putting a new main board in there set it back to zero. I got a different serial number here than what's on the TV, so well, I shouldn't have shown anybody that. Anyway. <laughs> Still the TV. <laughs> you know my serial number. <laughs> so I'm going to read through this stuff and see what's going on. I just checked. I just checked. I don't know half this stuff. All right. As you can see, back in the saddle again. Aerosmith. TV's back where it came from. 
got all the other TVs that I had to swap around to, from upstairs because one small uh, upstairs is smaller than the one in the bedroom, and then the bedroom is smaller than the one in this one. So I had the one in the bedroom here and the one upstairs in the bedroom. Uh, this is back up running, I reverse everything. As you can see, up and running.